today how to tie three different fishing knots. These fishing knots can be used for a lot of things. I'm going to explain them along the way. Um, the first knot I'm going to show you guys is called an improved quench knot. This knot is probably the most basic fishing knot your dad probably taught you when you were five years old. Um, majority of the people I know, this is how they tie their standard knot. So for today, this is going to be the loop of what would be the hook, and this is going to be the fishing line. So what you're going to start with is you're going to start by taking the line and going through the eye of the hook, as you would say. You're going to take about, on a regular fishing line, about three to four inches, but we're going to over-dramatize today so it's easier to see it. So you're going to take that, and you're just going to take the feet of your hook, and you're going to spin it about eight times. So when you spin it about eight times, you'll notice that a loop begins to form towards the eye of the hook right here. So you're going to take your end that you just went through the eye of the hook, you're going to take that in, go back through that hole that you made, but once you do that, you realize that there's another hole that you just created. So you're going to go back through that hole, and you're going to realize that when you pull tight, it creates a cinch knot. And that is one of the standard knots. I mean, it's basically in the name improved clinch knot. So what it does is it clinches down on the bead of the hook and not on the line. So the reason this is a good knot is because if you think about it, line tension whenever you're fishing is all about tension on the main line and not the knot. So if you have a lot of tension on your knot, you're more chance to snap it because that's a high area of tension. So what this does is it makes all the tension on the main line, not on the knot. So if you pull on this, it's not gonna slip, it's not gonna break. That is the first knot. The second one that I'm going to show you guys is basically the same knot, just simpler and a lot easier to do. That knot, we'll call it the fish and pull knot. That's not what I call it. Um, same, same step as the knot I just did, except there's not a step in it. So same thing. You're going to go through the eye of the hook. You're going to give yourself about five, six inches on a regular line, but we're going to over dramatize it. So you're going to spin it again eight times. You're going to go through that loop that you made, but instead of going back through the loop that we did on the previous one, you're just going to pull tight. And then it's not going anywhere. It cinches down on itself, same, same aspect, same concept. It's not going to break. It just clenches down on itself and I mean, the more, the harder you pull, the tighter it gets. So that one is called the fish and pull knot. And that one's really just a simpler version of the knot we just did. And then show you guys the third and last knot. So I was expecting more people in here. Two fishes in here. One of you. Okay. So. <laughs> So, <clears throat> whenever you talk about fishing line, so a lot of the time, especially saltwater fishing, um, you'll have you'll have uh, that clear monofilament line. It's like the regular stuff you buy at Walmart. But in the ocean, they have what they call a leader. So you'll have your hook. You'll have your hook, and then what they'll have is actually like steel braided line that comes off the hook because majority of the fish in the ocean have teeth. So when they bite that hook, they're possibly going to bite that line, and it's steel so that their teeth don't cut that line. So this knot is basically for deep sea fishing, because what you're going to have normally, I'll just start going with it, is that this line is going to be steel. Just kind of keep that. This would be a steel line, and this would be called your leader. And so this would be all steel, and then you would have your main line, so this would be connected to your fishing rod and your reel. So this would be monofilament, which would be that clear, you know, you can cut it with a pair of scissors line, and then this would be your steel line. So this is a knot of how to attach the two. So, it's called a blood knot. It looks confusing, but it's really not. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up the two and you're going to get them to where they overlap each other by a couple inches and you're going to pinch the middle. So when you pinch the middle, 
you've got loose ends and they're in the middle. So what you're going to do is you're just going to wrap one in four to five times. And then you're going to take that other end and do the exact same thing. So you're basically taking the lines and overlapping them, just looping them together basically. And then when you do that, you can kind of see how they're entangled together, right? So you just take those two ends and you just tie a simple over under knot. And when you do that, those lines that you entangled will cinch down on each other. So when you pull, they're not, they're not slipping, they're not coming together. They cinch down on each other. So then you create a cinch knot. And it's called a blood knot. Um, but all three of these knots are what you would consider cinch knots. So by that, I mean they cinch down on each other. They're not entangled with each other. They're not looped on each other. They're not pulling on each other. They cinch down and it creates, cinch knot is probably the strongest knot you can get. So out of this whole speech, I hope you guys can at least know how to do one of these. I know this one is for mostly deep sea fishing, but I would really hope that all of you guys could do an improved clinch knot or even a fish and pull knot which is your, just your standard, you know, every kid learns it when they're five year old type of fishing line. So, that's my speech. Thank you guys for your time. <coughs> Anything else I need to do?